For days, the Liberals and Tories have been trading barbs on the price on carbon, a wider fuel tax holiday, and the data being used to estimate the economic impact of both. The government contends Parliament's budget watchdog, the PBO's admission, he included the industrial price on carbon in his analysis means he's way off. But in a committee this week, Yves Giroux pushed back, saying the government has its own analysis saying basically the same thing, that there is an overall hit to the economy and that he's seen it but has been told he can't share it. Take a listen. The government has economic analysis on the impact of the carbon tax itself and the OBPS. We've seen that, staff in my office, but we've been told explicitly not to disclose it and reference it. They put a gag on you basically saying you can't talk about it. That is my understanding. MPs are here in studio to talk about this. Parliamentary Secretary to the Environment Minister Adam Van Coverden, Van Coverden, pardon me, is with us. Next to him, Conservative House Le Leader Andrew Shear is here, and next to him, NDP House Leader Peter Julian. Hi, everybody. Good to see you back Thanks again to, uh, to talk you. about this issue, with, which definitely persists. Mr. Van Coverden, I'll start with you. Why isn't the government making its analysis public? Well, our government has made our analysis public for years now, and what's clear is that the Parliamentary Budget Officer made some calculations in both 2022 and 2023 uh, that were in correct. They overestimated the overall impact on the Canadian economy that, that carbon pricing will have. And it's also still the case that it's bringing down our emissions, probably contributing to up to 30 percent of those emissions reductions. And at the same time, the Canada carbon rebate is sending more money back to eight out of 10 Canadian families. All of that continues to be true. But what the Parliamentary Budget Officer offered on April 17th in his supplementary report on carbon pricing was that they actually overestimated the overall impact by, as you pointed out, including the output based uh, pricing system in that but for Canadians. And that's not something that's applied to Canadians. It's an industrial price. So we welcome the news. Though, that's not an answer to my question. My, my question is, why are you not making public the analysis your government has done on the economic impact of the price on carbon? So we haven't denied access to any documents or any information with the PBO, and I have absolutely no You've quarrel with the PBO. You've given it to the PBO, PBO, but you won't let him share it. That's not my understanding. The, the honest truth is the the PBO has done extraordinary work. There was an accident made or a mistake made uh, about, uh, well, starting in 2022 and then again in 2023 when more, uh, you know, carbon pricing modalities were included in the overall impact. So what ha has become clear is that the parliamentary budget officer has overestimated the impact of carbon pricing in Canada on consumers. Well, to your point, look, what the what he did was include the industrial price in his analysis. He is reanalyzing, but he said here on this program, he doesn't anticipate it will have a material impact on his overall conclusion, which was taking into account not just, just the net in and out, but also the wider economic impact that slightly more Canadians will be worse off than better off as your government contends. Back to the original question. You very clearly, in this letter, the Department of Environment says, the data the department is providing contains unpublished information. This is the letter to the PBO, uh, dated in May. As such, I request you to ensure that this information is used for your office's internal purposes only and is not published or further distributed. The Conservatives contend you're not publishing this because it corroborates what the PBO says, that more Canadians will be worse off. Why not just make the information public if it says something differently, as your government argues? Well, from a fiscal perspective, that's not what the Parliamentary Budget Officer has offered Canadians. They've continually said that 8 out of 10 families get more back through the Canada carbon rebate, which just I'll remind Canadians. Yeah, exactly. The net in and out means that eight out of ten families get more money back. There is a broader impact that the concert, that the parliamentary budget officer has analyzed. And however, since that's going to be redone, I'd ask that the overall cost of climate change ex itself also be included in that report because climate change isn't free. Climate change is costing Canadians billions of dollars a year in damages. So have you done all floods. that analysis? Like, Absolutely that's not. What, I'm not qualified. Not, not I'm, you, the I'm government. That's all I'm asking. Is the government <laughs> going to tell Canadians, like, if you keep saying we're all better off, are you going to show the math? Well, the math that the Parliamentary Budget Officer offered before April 17th indicated just that. And they, okay, they nice. continue to say that 8 out of 10 families get more money back. We're talking about dollars in their pockets. And what's unfortunate... If you don't the include the economic impact, correct. Well, I mean... That's what, that's what he says. That's what I'm just I'm, I'm attributing to him. We're talking about money in their pocket, money in their pocket and money out of their pocket. And that's what the Conservatives have been, you know, playing fancy math with. But we've seen in the last couple of, of weeks that the Conservative math just isn't adding up. They, you know, estimated that your average Albertan uses over 3,000 litres of gas over the course of a summer. That's completely false. Like, I don't think any Albertan uses 3,000 litres of gas over the course of three months. So okay, the Conservatives keep using funny math to justify their climate change denying ambitions. Um, 
Uh, but we're going to stick to the parliamentary budget officer and what he says is that Canadians get more back through carbon, uh, Canada carbon rebate than Let's they Let's get pay. Mr. Scheer into the conversation. And I want to ask specifically about basically the PBO's math and the inclusion of the industrial carbon tax. We don't know exactly to what degree that did have an impact, but economists who have done some analysis so far say there will be some impact. It will a conservative government, if you do form government, keep the industrial price on carbon and therefore the impact on the economy? Well, first of all, I should just highlight the fact that this is unprecedented to have an independent officer of parliament, the, the parliamentary budget officer, being ordered by the government, be effectively being placed under a gag order, not to disclose information and costing of a major tax policy that, that's affecting Canadians. There's so much that my colleague said that is wrong. Canadians don't live in a world where they can only pay one set of the cost of the carbon tax. They live in a world where they pay all the costs. They pay the direct costs, when it, whether it's on their fuel bill or their home heating bill. They also pay the economic costs, whether it's uh, the, the, their companies not being able to offer higher wages because their small businesses are paying higher carbon taxes or if they have to pay higher prices for things along the supply chain where truckers and retailers have to increase prices as well to pay their share of the carbon tax. So Adam would be right if Canadians could choose, hey, I only want to pay one half of the cost here, but he's wrong because Canadians have to pay all the costs associated with it. And the parliamentary budget officer said that including the industrial emitter portion of it would have a negligible effect. But and he has yet it to would show be, his math. To be but, fair, he has yet to show his analysis. Fine, but I'll take that. him at his word. And, uh, and, and he's raising the alarm bell saying he's not even allowed to talk about what he's been shown by the department. And one more thing that Adam said that was just so ridiculous. Including the cost of climate change uh, is not something that is uh, that, that would cause a major difference between their approach and our approach well, because, because uh, otherwise, no, 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 otherwise <laughs> you would have to say you'd have to commit right now that climate change stops with the carbon tax. And what they what they're saying is climate change is continuing to get worse, and the carbon tax is continuing go, going up. Yeah, I think so the, the point the there is that the Canadians are going to get the worst of both worlds. They're going to get the cost. Yeah, but the argument is that there is a cost to the impact of climate change, and if you abdicate your responsibility in trying to lower emissions, and then you will bear as consumers, as Canadians as taxpayers those costs as well brutal, at the, to the tune of 15 billion dollars a year by 2030. But here's where that brutal double whammy comes into effect from the Liberal policy. Canadians are going to keep paying those because the carbon tax isn't working. Canada's share of emissions you don't know that. Uh, are, uh, when, when, when you compare it to global let, emissions let are, are much smaller anyway so, e, so the global emissions are going to continue to go up and especially with the carbon tax chasing away investment in clean Canadian technology like LNG and like other projects that this government has said no to. <laughs> that's going to drive more and more production Offshore but you didn't with higher emissions, just like Mr. Vancouver, as I pointed out, Mr. Vancouver. If I could just finish this one thought. Yeah, very quickly, because you're not answering my question. The yeah. government has acknowledged that they don't track emissions reductions linked to the carbon tax. That's what they said at committee. They have so massively overestimated but the, Canadian the reductions climate Institute associated did. with climate change. Well, uh, I take their your own point officials on that. have said they don't. Uh, well, they, they, they basically, the environmental and sustainable, Environment and Sustainable um, Commissioner, the AG's office, essentially said they don't have the math for yeah, it. 90% of it. their policies about how much they're going to reduce. The Canadian Climate Institute did do that analysis and said the consumer portion of it would reduce things by 9%. And circling back to my original question, 1%. 9%. And, and my original question, the industrial price could reduce things by about 30 percent. Will a conservative government keep the industrial price on carbon? Look, what, 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 what we've said is that uh, we're going to emphasize rewards, not punishments, carrots, not sticks, not finding new ways to put uh, impose taxes on Canadians. I should point out. Do that I when take the, that to I mean that you won't out, impose an industrial well, carbon I know, tax? I know you want me to you unveil. I know, you want, I know you want me to unveil the platform <laughs> right here on your show. Uh, but I should point out that when the Liberals brought in the carbon tax, they had to grant carve-outs on the large industrial side of things. They had to grant a carve-out to get an LNG project built. They had to give exemptions when it came in. So, you know, sure, th this that still idea, doesn't answer the question. But this yeah. idea that this is somehow... Uh, you know, uh, tough okay. on large polluters and easy on consumers has been completely debunked. Canadians pay more, and it doesn't have a me okay, uh, Mr. meaningful impact. I know you want to respond. I, I want to make sure I get Mr. Julian in, on, in this as well because I, I wanted to circle back to this fuel idea of a fuel holiday. Your party had originally proposed through a motion removing the GST from home heating. Yeah. Why, when, why would you vote against sort of a, a holiday in a broader sense to give Canadians a break at this juncture when they're feeling the, the pain of prices very acutely? Well, well first off, I mean, the, the ADP has brought more affordability measures to this parliament than, than any other party. But secondly, I want to come back to the issue of the PBO. This is a very important issue. The Liberals should not be hiding information uh, that has been developed uh, with taxpayers' funding. And 
This is uh, showing the, the same kind of disrespect to the PBO as an independent officer of parliament that we saw under the Harper years. I mean, they cut back funding for the Auditor General's Department, uh, for the PBO. Uh, an independent officer of parliament is supposed to be giving us their best figures and have all the information in hand. And Liberals tend to hide that information. Uh, Conservatives, of course, distort that information. That's not uh, anything that really allows for the kind of debate, the adult debate, that we need to have as a society moving so forward when it comes if, to climate change. What do you do if that information is released and it says that there is a net negative impact on the economy? Does your party continue to support the consumer carbon tax and prop up this government in their implementation of it? Well, we, we have, over, over the time I've been in Parliament, we've been talking about uh, cap and trade. We've been talking about a variety of measures. We believe we need to be at each, at each juncture putting in place the kind of policies that actually uh, bring our emissions down. And the climate crisis is costing us uh, heavily. We saw it with the heat dome just a couple of years ago in British Columbia. 600 people died. 60 of them were my constituents. We've seen atmospheric rivers, floods, forest fires that have ravaged huge parts of this country. So the cost of the climate crisis are huge. We need to put in place would, the best yeah, series of policies. That's what your party keeps saying, but you don't say exactly what you what your position is on the consumer portion of the carbon tax. Why not? Well, when we talk about the GST, the savings to Canadians would actually have been bigger. But what is your what position? The, Do you support the government on the implement, imposition of the consumer side of the carbon tax? Uh, what we have said is that we want to end all the exemptions to big polluters and we want to find the best path forward. And that includes ensuring that Canadians, particularly low-income low Canadians, uh, have more resources in order to ensure that they're paying for all of the costs that they, they have that are engendered by the climate crisis. I have time for one quick comment from each of you. That does not sound like unequivocal support for the consumer carbon tax from your closest allies in Parliament. Doesn't that tell you something? Well, it tells me something that when a, when a member of Parliament from British Columbia, where they've had carbon pricing in place in the form of a carbon tax in British Columbia for over a decade, and it's been working, and it's lowered their emissions in British Columbia, and we're doing the same thing right across the country in provinces where they don't have any plan to lower emissions, uh, like in that, Ontario. That's true of liberal-led province in Newfoundland and Labrador? You're saying just because they don't like the consumer carbon tax, they don't have any plan to, lo to lower emissions? Well, not an adequate one, and this works better. You you know, our plan to lower emissions is actually very, very effective because in 2015, when Mr. Scheer uh, was, was in power, emissions were going up. And now emissions are coming down, and that's undeniable. And Thanks to the all, pandemic, all actually, of the, at this all, point. All, well, it's the, that, production offshore, that, started, uh, the that started before the onset of the pandemic, and it's continued since. And for, for the NDP to continually side with the Conservatives when it's convenient on the environment, they ran on a commitment, on commitments that were not as ambitious with respect to the environment. So they're demonstrating that, you know, when it comes a little bit tough, when it gets a little bit hard to, to fight for the environment, they're nowhere to be found. We know to, to, what to expect you, with you the really Conservatives. You really think that's the case, Wild Canoe? Andrew Fury, everybody's just afraid to be tough. No, I'm talking about the federal NDP and the Conservatives. And the, in, the, in this case, we know the Conservatives don't care about climate change. Mr. Scheer ran his leadership campaign on increasing emissions no, in Canada. He thinks well, that Canadian emissions, emissions are superior. Okay, so, so you know, it's 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 just not the case. The Canada carbon rebate's going out on July 15th, as it has every quarter of the last couple of years, and it's supporting affordability right across this country. And you know, the Conservatives are using uh, quotes from food banks, organizations that I meet with frequently, to talk about affordability. We're meeting Canadians where they are, and that Canada. A carbon rebate is part and parcel of our affordability plan, and it's helping Canadians this summer. Mr. Scheer, the central part of the Liberals' argument seems to be that your party just doesn't care about climate change, that the impact on Canadians that they're going to suffer through over the next number of years because of disasters and the frequency with which they're happening is of no concern. I think they've actually said you want to watch, you don't care to watch the country burn. Do they have a point? Uh, not at all. It's th their record that has seen uh, the carbon tax be completely debunked for what it is. It's it's a complete scam. So false. It, 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 no, you, you yourself said that Canadians are only ahead if they only have to pay part of the cost. They don't live in that world, Adam. They're they don't. They have to pay all the cost. Their lives. Yes, and a Canadian carbon tax is not going to have a measurable impact so, on climate change. So 300 when, economists disagree when, with you. When all There's you result you in find. is shifting production to other countries with you, lower standards. Do you, have, have, do you have evidence, just minute, do you have evidence to, to prove your point that it's doing not. nothing? Because the, they, take, the Canadian the Climate Institute when, when, yes. when the government says no, saying, that they it, don't track emissions reductions, yes, I will absolutely. But that, that study Ebola. does exist. Uh, just give it a second. That study at, does exist you, outside of the government. When you look at the you number of coal-fired <laughs> power plants in China coming online to produce the types of things that it's no longer economically feasible Talking to produce Canada. in Canada, that doesn't help the world. A molecule of CO2 doesn't need a password. But how do we tell China to reduce their emissions if we're unwilling to reduce our own? A molecule of CO2 does not need a password. 
passport to tra travel around the world. And if we shut down development here, if we kill jobs and investment here in Canada, only to see it produced in other countries with lower standards on the environment and more dirtier forms of electrical generation, we're not better off as a planet. Mm. And Canadians will have to pay Ms. more in the carbon tax and suffer more from the effects of Mr. climate Julian, change. Mr. Julian, last word too, I'm way over time. As usual, as is the case with us, um, uh, Mr. Vancouver and essentially said that your party is afraid to do the hard stuff on climate change. The hard stuff because on you're, climate. you're not being equivocal no, about it. No, C50, which is the Clean Energy Act that the Liberals stalled on for years, is a result of Jagmeet Singh and the NDP pushing so we actually make the investments necessary for good clean energy jobs so we can uh, effectively have a, a, a process and, and put in place a policy that combats the climate crisis. The, the Conservatives, of course, are climate change deniers. But the Liberals have been so slow off the mark. It's the NDP that has been actually pushing for the kind of progress that we need to see in this country. Like what? But just C50. The, just C50? C50 I mean, great, no, C, do you C, not C, think C50. that the carbon price is part of that? C C50 is one of the landmark pieces of legislation Government to legislation. actually have in place. Well, we forced you to do it, like we <laughs> okay. like we did dental care, like we did pharmacare, like we did affordable housing. I mean, the NDP is the, you know, the fourth party in this parliament, but we have weighed heavily on making sure we actually have an environment for tomorrow and that we combat the climate change, but the your, climate crisis. But your, your leader has said that the government is not acting fast enough, not doing enough, not meeting yes. the crisis where it is. He's only leader of this country because your party props him up. We're saying that we need to do action now, and this is what uh, the NDP has managed to achieve in this parliament, and there, there's more to come. Mr. Julian, Mr. Scheer, and Mr. Vancouver, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for making time for the discussion.